From time to time, cybersecurity professionals have to handle malware to do analysis to understand what happened. And if you don't know how to analyze malware, you can either make a bad situation way worse or really mi misunderstand or underestimate what the malware actually did in your environment. In this video, I'm going to be showing you the tools and techniques that I use for manually analyzing malware. And then just like learning math, but then using a calculator, I'm going to show you one of the tools that I personally use in order to automate a lot of my malware analysis, which saves me a ton of time and gives me great results. So let's get into it. First thing I want to show you is how you can get Malware. I personally like to use Malware Bazaar. It's bazaar.abuse.ch. Uh, you can Google Malware Bazaar. It'll come up immediately. You'll be good to go. So you can basically go into uh, the database here, and you can see they people are constantly uploading. You can use uh, the syntax tag, like you know, Emotet, if if that's what you want to look at, and you can see. It comes back with all these emotets, right? Excel files and stuff like that, DLLs. So this is where you can get malware. You just click over here to download, no big deal. And there you go. I do want to point out uh, on some browsers, you can see Chrome blocked it because it, it does detect that it's malware. You will have to go into your Chrome settings and basically disable the, the, the security. I want to uh, encourage you to re-enable the security when you're done, unless you have a dedicated machine for doing malware analysis. So if you're playing on your regular machine, definitely put it back on. But this is how you can get it. Some other sites um, that you can use to get um, malware is hybrid analysis. Uh, you can download uh, some malware there. I also want to give a shout out to my good friend, uh, Josh Stroshine. He has a GitHub and he does, he's uh, an excellent malware analyst and he's, he hosts a ton on his GitHub page uh, and we'll actually be looking at some Agent Tesla in a little bit. All right, so that is where we, so we're going to get our malware. So we've downloaded a couple samples. I do want to point out uh, if you want a dedicated uh, operating system for malware analysis, Remnux is, as far as I can tell, um, what the, the the choice build is for people who do um, security research on malware and, and, and you know, full-time malware analysts. Uh, they like the Remnock. Okay, so we've got a couple pieces of malware. Let's just say this is the one. Now, just so you know, malware always has um, the MD5 hash or the SHA-256. Some, some type of hash is always the file name. So you can talk with other malware analysts and be able to understand the same thing. So this is the Excel file. Let's pretend it says invoice.xlsx, right? And and end users run it in their environment. Um, you know wh what happened? Oh, I don't know. I just ran this Excel file and something. Nothing. It, it was stupid. Okay. Well, let's let's figure out how bad this is. Now, some of the tools that I like to use uh, right off the rip. Didier Stevens actually has an entire uh, collection of awesome, awesome tools, um, and you can see them all here. You can download them, but he's got a um, this one OLE dump. Uh, which I really like for malware analysis. So, okay, so we're going to run OLE dump on this piece of um, potential malware. We don't know what it is, but we think it's malware, okay? You could see OLE dump has gone ahead and identified some of the macros and streams in here. And you could see this capital M means a stream. Now, right off the rip, we can tell that this looks unusual, right? Which is a classic uh, malware indicator, right? Obfuscation, they always obfuscate and make their code look weird. We can use OLE dump to extract the stream, the stream there, and do this. Okay, and so this is the extraction of that macro and we can see right away that yes, this is definitely looking suspicious, right? Copied and pasted it in. And you can see right here, if, if you don't know how to read code, like you're already at a disadvantage um, because you know, that you're know you analyzing malware, just analyzing code. You can see that this is a VB script or a, a VBA uh, function, some type of macro function. Um, there's certain things they can't obfuscate, right? So this right here is the uh, char uh, function, and it's basically maps uh, a number to an ASCII, right? So it's whatever the value is of WEQE, which is an integer, right? That makes sense, minus 22. So if we look at this function right here, we can see it's all throughout this thing. So basically what it's saying is, is take whatever the number is, right? So in this case, 127, subtract 22, so 105, and then look at the car value. So if we look at the car function in Microsoft's uh, knowledge base, you can see 
you know, basically car 65 returns A. We're going to pull up this set of values, right? So here's the mapping. So if we're looking at this, that means um, 109 minus 22 is what? 87, right? So car 87 equals W, okay? So then you, you, you would slowly start piecing this together. Um, I'll just tell you that <laughs> I've already done the work to analyze it one by one. And this is basically what it comes back with is W script shell. Uh, which is how you're going to call invoke a shell function. So you can see that they've done this create object using this value right here, this value, right? If you trace it, this value is wscript.shell. Okay, so now we've got this variable set to wscript.shell. And if we look down here, you can see it's wscript.shell.run. That's not obfuscated. And what is it running? It's running the it's passing these two arguments as the run okay so first of all you could see this right here maps this which equals this if you follow this this equals this and then they concatenate it with this so you'd have to you basically have to walk and uh you'd have to basically run the function for each of these values to see i've already done that so you can see it basically runs this command anyways long story short it runs command exec in this URL. It's basically pulling this MSI file down and running it local on the machine. There's an indicator of compromise, uh, also the running WScript shell um, and having command call it. These are all indicators of compromise. Like I said, I've already done all this work, but it probably took me like 30 minutes, right? And I, I knew uh, the tools that I had to use for that. Okay, so now let's take a tool like Intizer Analyze, one of the tools I like to use to kind of automate this and see what happens. And you can see one of the best things for me is the time, right? That took all of about, I don't know, five seconds. And it's already analyzing it. You can see, yes, it's Excel. It's run command.exe, MSI exec. Okay, those are valid uh, Microsoft things. But if you look at the indicators of compromise, there's that URL and here's the IP, which I didn't even find in the, uh, um, the VBA script. I'd have to continue digging deeper. So again, I, I hope you can see like the whole the whole point is understanding like how you could use OLE dump, for example, in order to extract those VBA codes and see uh, what the command looks like and all this obfuscated code and, and play with it and understand what the attackers are. But if you're in practice and, and you're a practitioner, time is really of the essence. It, it would be fun to, it was fun doing this, um, but you know, in, in practice, I need this information as soon as possible because if my end user ran this, I need to put this into the sim <laughs> and immediately start looking to see if if what traffic came back from this IP address or if this uh, domain name resolved to an IP and then figure out what IP that is. I need to look to see if other hosts in my environment are compromised. I need to look at whatever the host is. If, if this did in fact come back and it ran that MSI exec, maybe look at my endpoint and EDR tool and see if it's seen anything. And then start looking at maybe lateral movement from that box, possibly isolate and wipe. Let's do another one, okay? We've got uh, end user calls and says, hey, I, some, my computer's acting weird or whatever. And you find this odd looking uh, file in their temp directory or on their desktop or whatever, or EDR flags that is potential suspicious, but doesn't know. So we don't know what we're doing. Another like solid uh, first step really um, is to look at the strings, which is basically a sys internals application, super easy and look for the strings. These are um, human readable strings, right? So, I mean, you do get stuff like this, right? Uh, which may or may not mean anything, but you can see right away, okay, it's definitely an Excel spreadsheet. Um, it's the 2003 version. Oh, another thing we could do is file and then the um, the name. And you can see here, get my picture out of the way. You could see here, yes, it's um, Little Indian. It's done on a Windows. Um, title doesn't matter. Created application, Microsoft Excel. So we are like, okay, this is an Excel file. Let, now let's look at those strings. Okay. I, and by the way, the I did strings dash eight because if you don't, I think it's four characters and you just get a lot of noise. Okay, so like, let's look, let's look. So this is all kind of looking normal, no big deal. Then you see these modules. Like, what what are these? These, again, these are like obfuscated names, kind of suspicious looking. And we, we see a bunch of it in here. Okay, uh, Microsoft Excel, that makes sense. 
uh, VBA DLL. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is starting to look kind of suspicious. Use a tool called OLE VBA to take a look at those VB scripts. Now you could see that this tool is awesome because it, you know, it took a second to run, but it's already calling out suspicious things in the VBA script itself, right? We're seeing, um, you know, can write to a file, uh, read system environment variables, may attempt to obfuscate strings. That's definitely an indicator. Um, creates an OLE object. That's suspicious, right? This create object. Um, so this one is definitely suspicious. Then look at this. OLE VBA actually pulls out these IOCs for us. This is a great little tool. Um, and then the executable file name 5.exe, another indicator of of compromise here. So let's see if we can dig a little deeper. We're using OLE dump again, right? And we can see here, yep, there's definitely these macros and they all have these kind of intense looking obfuscated names. So what I would normally do is just start at the top. So let's look at um, sample 10 or excuse me, stream 10. And it looks like stream 10 is not that interesting. It just pops up it just pops up a, a, a message block and says, thank you. And then you click a button and then it calls capricious macro, this particular function within it. So like, let's look at this which one's capricious. There it is. Okay. Stream 34. Okay. So rinse and repeat. It's very difficult to read in a shell. So let's go ahead and pipe it out to a file. S34. There we go. Okay, so now you can see, what was the command it, it called again? It called the sheath readable. <laughs> okay, so let's let's take a look at that. There it is, function sheath readable. And then it says for each and it runs through again. Like, so you'd have to really dig in and, and, and look at all these variables and kind of basically reverse the variables slowly. And you pull out these kind of function calls and stuff until you figure it out what is happening. I didn't go and do this one already in advance, but this would take like an hour, at least an hour and a half. And another thing that malware, um, malware authors typically do is they'll put function calls in here. Like, like just for example, like this all might be nothing. This could just be designed to waste an analyst's time, right? So it's a real pain in the butt. So I don't know what this does yet, but let's go ahead. We, we did have um, these findings back here, which were useful. Um, and took just a, a moment here, but what exactly is it doing? Let's jump back into Inzer and just drop that sample in, right? We know it's an Excel spreadsheet. We know it's got some indicators of compromise. See, it, it took like just 10 seconds, right? Which is cool and it's web-based. So it's, you know, you don't have to have like the right um, Python version. You don't have to have like supporting libraries and, you know, import requests and stuff like that. So it's definitely malicious. It calls SPL wow 64. Let's look at the TTPs. Okay, so you could see Inderzer also does this uh, MITRE attack framework thing. You could see that it, it's got command and scripting interpreter. It's got C2 traffic on an encrypted channel. This is not good. So this looks like some type of, um, you know, persistence mechanism or kind of stage two uh, malware payload where it's, it's establishing... Um, some type of footprint so it can it can uh, take commands and, and message back, maybe do data exfiltration. So what else are we looking at? You can see here, it gives you all these details um, on the actual TTPs, which is useful. Um, yeah, so Excel is calling these URLs, crypto expert. You know, using a tool like Intezer, it really, it really cuts down on time. Yes, you could, you could, um, you, if, if you have the time, the patience and the skill, you could easily, um, step through and reverse this um, and, and maybe get this information. But with a tool like this, again, time is of the essence. You get all your IOCs so you can start looking in your environment. You know, another really cool thing I like about it, they put virus total here, which, you know, everybody uses virus total um, to see what's up. You can see I've done virus total right here and it comes back with 35 out of 62. So this, this thing is definitely malicious. And when we look at it, it says VB Trojan, downloader, like, I mean, it's interesting because it is malicious, but it doesn't really give us any indication of what malware family it's related to. Um, is it a key logger? Is it a Trojan? It just kind of says bad. So now what is really cool about Intezer is it goes that extra level deep instead of just kind of classifying it as bad. 
you could see they've identified this particular piece of malware as Cobalt Strike, uh, which is uh, a great tool for pen testers, but also a, a fan of threat actors. You could see here, uh, because it's classified as Cobalt Strike, we can then start looking at um, behaviors, executables, uh, you know, malware traffic patterns related to Cobalt Strike behavior. Now, another interesting thing here is the way that Intiser works, they, they basically have looked at tons of malware and extracted strings from them in order to kind of develop this, what they call genes, but basically it's like common strings, right? Common code in the software. And then they map and say like, Cobalt Strike always has this, or we have Cobalt Strike and this piece of malware we're analyzing also looks like Cobalt Strike. So when we look at this one, for example, you can see Cobalt Strike. They've got the 154 strings, 378 code genes, right? So let's look at the code genes and they've got it broken out by family. So it looks like Zeus, Kins, and Turla also use some, not a lot, 13 and nine of the same kind of code, right? These are just hex and blocks. I think what's really more interesting is when you look at strings, which is what you and I can read. And you can see this piece of malware, Cobalt Strike, and it looks like they actually um, have a bunch of um, crypto XM rig miner in here. So if we just like flash on the Cobalt Strike family, you can see it's a little tough with the, the zoom in, but right here is this PowerShell for invoke, execute on a new object, web client, right? We see, like, again, you could say, we see this in XM rig and Cobalt Strike. We see it in XM rig, PowerShell, NOP, exact bypass, encoded commands, right? So uh, hopefully you get it. Like, you know, virus total, very cool. Uh, it says it's bad. Intiser, it gives you a little bit further um, refinement in the family of malware that it is or what malware it is. And you could actually take more uh, informed action on it, which is nice. Now, um, I, I haven't used this myself, but, uh, you know, they've got these great little plugins here for Ghidra. If you want to do some dynamic analysis, Ida, which is the OG uh, disassembler. And then there's a Chrome extension, which I yeah. and you can see, yep, there's that message box with the... Um, with the, the, the click through really nice too, is that we didn't have to interact with the, um, we didn't have to interact with the application. Like it automatically just did it and then extracted all those IOCs and TTPs. Um, so this is why I use a tool like Intiser, even though, as I said at the beginning, it is really fun to play with malware, especially macros because they're interpreted, they're not compiled, uh, which is a whole different level of, uh, malware analysis uh but you know it, it, it's cool it's just i don't like unfortunately i don't have all the time in the world if you're a student it's really cool to walk through this if you're a practitioner uh a tool like this is a lot more you know practical and, and, and useful uh frankly so a couple of other tools that i do want to mention for malware analysis before we before we go um a hex editor i'm on a mac so hex fiend is something you can use you can just drop a file in a hex editor and it'll literally just show you what's up now this is that second sample that we looked at um that had the c2 stuff and you could see you know all these words right here and everything like that again i prefer to use strings to um look at this stuff but if it is a if it's a if it's a compiled program strings may not generate as much interesting information as um a, as, as a hex editor would okay so a hex editor is definitely something to drop in your toolbox. Another, you know, good one to have in the toolbox is Ida. I was having some issues with Ida, unfortunately. Um, so I wasn't able to like get it working on my machine. I think it's because my Mac is a M1 ARM chip and Ida doesn't run on ARM. It runs on x86, 64. You don't have to really understand that. Just know that Ida is the OG uh, malware analysis tool. Also uh, for, for compiled, uh, reverse um, disassembly. Another one that's pretty useful to mention is Ghidra. Ghidra is run by the NSA. Uh, they released this open source. And Ghidra is a lot like IDA. They're supposed to be able to um, disassemble and decompile. So your so the disassembled binary kind of looks like programming code, like see like the, the shape and functions of it. Uh, it's useful. I've played with Ghidra a little bit, uh, but again, my day-to-day -day activity um, is less concerned with doing malware analysis and, and security research and really extracting those things and more about figuring out where are the TTP, like what's the TTPs, what are the indicators of compromise, how bad is my environment, what do I need to do for my end users, um, and I need to do it quickly, which is, again, why these tools are wicked fun, but using an automated tool um, 
is is so much more practical and valuable. Oh, one thing I do want to mention with Intiserve, which is pretty cool, is um, you get 50, uh, uh, 50 analysis a, a month, right? So you can drop uh, 50 files or whatever and do some analysis. So if you want, just as a as a for fun, you could download a piece of malware from Malware Bazaar or wherever, and then just get an account on, on Indeser and, and go in here and drop a file and see what it says. And like, you can get a feel for like how malware looks. It might even be a good way if you want to get into malware research to kind of start here so you can see what it is and then start messing around with analyzing the malware and see if you can find those indicator compromise instead of trying to figure out like what are the indicators you already have kind of like the solution and then you can work through it almost kind of like a walkthrough that's going to do it for this episode i hope um, if you're interested in playing with malware that this is somewhat useful if you're a practitioner uh, i hope you bookmark some of these uh, resources because um, they are very valuable. They are interesting. And when you have malware in your environment, you're actively dealing with an incident. Uh, being able to move quickly is, uh, you know, just incredibly valuable, especially if it's sp if the infection's spreading or, if, you know, like the threat actors are actually in your environment. That's going to do it uh, for this episode. Uh, definitely check out, if you're interested, I've been doing uh, a morning cybersecurity news briefing uh, at 8 a.m. Um, every single day. And people are really loving that. So, you know, if you want to check that out, hit the bell for notifications. I don't typically say that, but the bell for notifications will tell you when I go live. It's like a 15, 20 minute uh, briefing um, every day of the top cybersecurity news stories. And people have really, really enjoyed it. So I hope you can join us. And until next time, stay secure.